If you are listening right now, I know that there is something that you're fearful about. I don't know what it is, but we all have fear that holds us back. It makes us paralyzed. It stops us from taking forward action. It stops us from doing things that we normally would do for fear of what others might think. So if that is you, and I know it is because all of us have fear in our life, then I think you'll find this episode helpful. So if you're ready to shift your mindset and tap into the opportunities that are waiting for you right now, let's go. Welcome to the Creating Clarity Podcast, where we talk all about clearing the fog, shifting our focus, and uncovering the opportunities that are hidden right in front of us. I'm your host, Dr. Liz Aguirre. Before I begin, I must emphasize that this work is separate from my professional medical work and does not represent medical advice or opinions of any specific organization. Welcome back, everybody. I have to admit, I was not planning on recording today. However, when inspiration strikes, I have to get to the mic because there's something good to come. And today, inspiration was just all around me. And it started off at six o'clock this morning when I was at Pilates. And to be honest with you, I I wasn't expecting to uh, talk about this. But as I recognize that we're coming to the end of season two of the Creating Clarity podcast, I think it's time to kind of wrap things up and take a look back at what we have discussed this season. We've talked about investing in yourself. We've talked about how to do that by sleep, self-compassion, managing your weight through exercise and healthy foods and our relationships. And we've talked about a lot of different things, but all of this comes back to being about you and how to become the best version of yourself so that you can show up as the strongest, most powerful you. And we don't realize that to do that, it doesn't mean working harder. It means working smarter. And by that, I mean working smarter on ourselves and prioritizing ourselves and saying me first when we know that we are at the end of our rope, when we're exhausted, when we have nothing left to give, that's the time that we have to take a step back and really focus on ourselves. But today, what I'm going to talk about is one of the things that prevents us from doing that, and that is fear. I hear a lot about fear. And of course, I hear about it because I do a lot of reading. I listen to a lot of podcasts. I do a lot of coaching. And honestly, fear is a common theme that I hear about all the time. So the question is, what do we do about it? And what happens when the fear paralyzes us? Because the reality is a lot of the reasons we don't accomplish the things we want to do is because we are fearful, fearful of the unknown, fearful of failing, fearful of what people might think, what they might say, what we might do to embarrass ourselves. And today, inspiration came in the most unexpected way because I was at Pilates, and for those of you who have been following, you know that I just started Pilates about three months ago. So I am not incredibly strong, but I am getting stronger every day, and I'm just amazed at how much my core strength has improved. But the reason I'm laughing already is because of an incident that happened a few weeks ago. And what happened, this is so embarrassing, I can't even believe that I'm about to talk about this in my podcast. But what happened was we were doing an exercise that involved a lot of core strength. And I was like bearing down trying to do this exercise. And honestly, I didn't have the core strength to be able to do it. So I like literally was pushing so hard that I felt like I was going to pass gas. And so right then the instructor came over to try to help me through the exercise. And I was like, I'm sorry, I just don't have the core strength. And the truth is, 
I, I probably could have managed to do it, but I was like, there is no way I'm doing that. Cause I was so afraid that I was going to pass gas with her right there and just totally embarrass myself. So I was like, no way I'm not doing that. And I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll do a modification because it, it's not in me yet. And oh my gosh. So look what happened. I was so afraid of passing gas that I would not even allow her to walk me through the exercise and show me how to do it. Well, fast forward to today, and I went to a different studio to do Pilates. And so there were people I've never met. I don't know these people, but for whatever reason, maybe it's because of the recent storms or um, things going on that there were like five people that no showed. So the studio is normally really packed and there were like five people that no showed. And so there's most of the people in the studio at one end and then me and one other girl at the other end of the studio. And so what happened, I was at this new studio. It was a higher level of Pilates and um, we were really working through trying to do this exercise. And I kid you not, all of a sudden, the loudest, like this poor girl just ripped it and her gas just came out. And I felt so bad for her. I was like, oh my gosh, that is so embarrassing. And that almost happened to me. So I know how that feels. And then I realized, oh, wait a minute. I'm at this end of the studio with her. Half the class probably thinks that was me. They know it was one of us, but they don't know it wasn't me. So, but nonetheless, I was like, well, hopefully they know it's her because you could kind of tell it came from that side of the room, but it was still really embarrassing. So we keep going. We go through another 10 minutes and I am not kidding. She like ripped it again, like so loud. And then I was like, okay, if that were me, what would I do? Like I probably would have like, I, I don't know what I would have done, but I literally would have wanted to crawl under the reformer and just hide and not be seen. And I, you know what? I might've even been so embarrassed that I'd not show up for the rest of the week. But I want you to think about this because uh, probably everybody else who left that studio this morning got a good chuckle, maybe told a friend, but nobody really knows who it was. And even if they did, you know what? A week from now, they're not going to care. And not only that, half of them probably thought it was me and not even the other girl. So whereas she might be just sitting there horrified, she's probably not realizing what people are really thinking. Number one, they don't care. Number two, they're probably thinking, yep, been there, done that. Or, yep, I've almost done that. It's embarrassing. I feel so bad for her. They're not looking at her thinking, oh my gosh, she is so gross and I can't believe she did that. That's not what they're thinking. Everybody is thinking about themselves and just horrified and embarrassed for her. So I bring this up because there are so many times that we do not take action and we're paralyzed because we are afraid of what other people are going to think. We are afraid of putting ourselves out there because what if I fail? What if I apply for that job and I don't get it? So what? If you don't apply, you're definitely not getting it. Or what if I apply for this event? Or what if I go on this singing competition and I embarrass myself? So what? People are not going to remember that. And you know what? Even if they do, even if they get a laugh at your expense, the reality is that's a means to make them feel better. That's a means to make themselves feel better. And honestly, when this girl ripped it, it kind of made me feel better. I'm like, oh, thank goodness I'm not the only one. <laughs> Because that literally almost happened to me. And I want you to think about this because so many of us are paralyzed by fear. And if you are working on your own self-development, you will hear this over and over again. You will hear this from very successful people that are even fearful now. What if I don't? What if I put myself out there? What if I say I'm going to do this and I embarrass myself? You know, Tony Robbins, when he first started speaking, he tells the story about how he booked an event and I don't know, something like five or 10 people showed up in the big auditorium. 
And I have heard this from comedians. I just heard this um, on a podcast I was listening. A comedian was being inter interviewed and he said it was a big, a, a big venue that held like 400 people and there were literally four people in attendance. And so he gave this hour and a half show for four people. This happens all the time. And you as a person might feel like that is the most embarrassing thing that could happen. But honestly, nobody knows about it until you tell the story. The only people who knew were the people that were involved and the four people in attendance. And guess what? The four people in attendance probably thought it was the most amazing stand-up they've ever heard because like, it's kind of cool. They're the only ones there. They are laughing their buns off, right? So we create the story in our head and we're the one who makes it mean something. But in reality, we have control of a situation. And we don't even realize it. We're too busy worrying about what other people are thinking or not thinking. I remember hearing Brene Brown talk about this. She did a talk. The talk was really good. But then the naysayers came out online and they were posting comments about she needs to lose weight. And hasn't she ever heard of Botox? And doesn't she know how to dress? And so many ugly things that were said about her. And it had nothing to do with her talk or the content, or what she was there to share with the world. It was about superficial stuff. So it doesn't matter how well you think you have it together. There will always be those naysayers that are there to bring you down. And it has nothing to do with you. It has to do with them and their negative state of mind. Do you think a very happy person is going to be putting down somebody else like that? No, they're absolutely not. Do you think someone who really wishes well for the world and wants happiness for other is going to look at somebody in the Pilates studio and say, gosh, that was embarrassing. No, if I had an opportunity to talk to that girl, I would have said, girl, been there. Like that literally only almost happened to me a couple of weeks ago. Don't worry about it. And just keep showing up because it will happen. The waves of life will come. Things are not always going to be brilliant. Sometimes you'll have a little stumble and that's okay. If you haven't heard the messy middle episode of my podcast, go back to it. It's at the very beginning when I was starting this podcast. I was so much less confident. I was so fearful. I didn't know how this was going to come out. And honestly, I was fumbling through it. And every week that I have continued to show up, it's gotten a little bit easier. But that didn't mean that it wasn't without the fear. I mean, I have been so fearful. What if people don't listen? I just celebrated a thousand downloads on the podcast. I didn't celebrate it because I was like, mm, it's not that much. There's not that many people listening. But guess what? It is. And the more you show up, the more confidence you gain, the more you realize that what you're doing is amazing and it's great. And you have something to offer and share with the world in whatever way that is. Guess what? Even if it's showing up to exercise, you're like, well, what does that mean? To, I mean, how is that contributing to the world? It is because when you become strong and you become confident and your ideas start to come to the surface and you're able to contribute to society in a more meaningful way because you are showing up as the awesome you, then you'll realize that everything that we do is connected in some way, in some fashion or other, it is connected. I can't tell you how many people have um, reached out to me about this podcast and said, wow, your sleep episode really helped me. Honestly, I was not, almost not going to do the episodes on sleep because I was like, well, people really get it that sleep is so important and that is necessary for you to be the best you. Will they really get it or they'll, they'll think, you know what? Okay, come on. There's more important things. And yeah, that's a luxury I don't have time for. And I just have to keep pushing through and you know, there are, our minds are always going to limit us, but I eventually put out the sleep episodes because my friend had a car accident because she wasn't getting enough sleep. And then I was kicking myself thinking, why was I fearful? Why was I so worried about whether people are, would listen or not? I know how important it is. I know people need to hear it. I should have put those episodes out earlier. And then maybe my friend who I know listens to this podcast wouldn't have had her car accident. All that to say, we are going to have so many struggles. 
there are so many things that are going to come into our life that are going to challenge us, that are going to embarrass us, that are going to make us fearful of going forward. But I want you to realize that you are in control of that. What you make it mean is going to be your reality. If I had passed gas in Pilates, I could make it mean this is embarrassing. I'm not going to come back for a week so that people will forget about it. Or I'm going to make it mean, guess what? I am an example for other people who might not be able to hold it in either. And that's okay. So anyway, maybe the, the gas story was a little TMI. Maybe not. Maybe you've been there, done that. But honestly, I'm willing to put the embarrassment out there and just push the fear to a side because I want you all to know that we're all experiencing these challenges in life. And whatever it is that you're experiencing fear about, change the story. Tell yourself a different story about that. So what if I embarrass myself? So what if I fall down and get back up? At least I'm taking the steps forward. This is the practice for your next big stage, whatever it is. Maybe you applied for this job and you didn't get it, but guess what? You learned something through that interview process. And the next time you interview, you're going to be even more prepared and more ready. And maybe that's that the biggest job you've ever had. Maybe you apply to 10 jobs and you don't get any of them, but each one is preparing you for a bigger interview that lands you a bigger job. So put the fear aside. You decide what it means. And I hope you found this helpful. And as always, please, please, I have my fears too. I have my fears that you guys are going to stop listening and you don't find it helpful. And then I remember, you know what, if I've struggled with this, other people have too. So please share this episode with a friend or two. Post it on your social media page. I don't think I've ever asked for that because I'm embarrassed. I'm afraid that you'll like not do that. But please post this to your social media site. Tag me. Hashtag creating clarity. Hashtag me first. Let's create a movement. Let's do it together. I'll see you next week. Thanks for listening. Make sure you hit subscribe so that you won't miss the next episode. And if you like this episode, please share it with a friend and give me a five-star review so that I can reach more people. I'll see you next week. Hi, just a quick reminder to everybody that I will be giving away a copy of the Miracle Morning book by Hel Elrod on November 16th, 2022. To enter to be eligible for this drawing, simply email me and let me know that you've left a review for this podcast and shared it with a friend. Email me at contact at lizagarymd.com. And remember, if you refer this to 10 or more friends, you get entered 10 times. I hope you'll join this contest. If you are hosting a conference, think about starting the event with a mindset talk. When you help the group collectively shift their mindset, the ideas will blow and new opportunities become much more clear. Visit my website, lizagarymd.com, and fill out a contact form to learn how you can book me as a keynote speaker for your next event. Disclaimer, the views and opinions shared here are for information and educational purposes only. They do not serve as a medical or professional advice. They do not represent any academic, medical, or professional institution or organization. If you found this helpful, don't forget to leave a five-star review. Thank you.